Hey everyone again, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts making a quick video just showing you the Hytera customer programming software. The Hytera videos that I showed the other day in a video, uh, I, I'm sure I'm getting some questions soon that say, well, where do I get the software? What's it look like? How different is the software compared to an MD380 or 390? Well, I can tell you that they're all asking for the same features. A lot of these things in this software I'll show you are similar to what you're used to, but the Hytera radios show a lot more capability in a radio like this compared to a Bofeng or a TYT. And the settings I'll show you in here are an example. But uh, so there's nothing like you need to learn a whole new programming software. It's essentially the same, maybe marked different or different places. Contacts, channels, zones, right? DMRID. All those are going to go in different places, but essentially the same idea with added features that are exclusive with a radio like a Hytera here. So I have the PD682 connected. This is the land mobile radio, not the ham version. So it shows you the serial number, the model name, uh, the frequency range, which is specific to the LMR. It's kind of wide. The ham version should have a narrower ham specific frequency band uh, in the radio that maybe has the potential to be unlocked but the firmware version also and it shows you so you can see if you need to update your firmware or what version you're running so you have to you have to have a DMR ID to use DMR right so you should either already have an ID or need to register one so if you have an ID um, or you need to register one you get that figured out first and then you come over here first we got to put the ID in the radio so we'll go to common and we'll go to setting. Now the first place here, the radio alias, you can just change it and put, you know, just the radio name. Uh, squelch level here, the receiving uh, digital and analog receive gain uh, time zone. But really what you're looking for is this here, user assignment ID checked and your ID in this first box here. Leave the second box the way it is. Just put your ID in the first box. The rest of the stuff on this page not really needed. If you're a Hytera or a Motorola expert and you want to change every setting that's available in this software, have at it. I'm just showing you the very basics for the newcomer to DMR just to show them really what they're looking at to get going. Okay, so we're, we got the ID in here. We're going to close this. Next, we're going to go into conventional, general setting, and, and network. Now, you'll see radio to PC network with some IP addresses and stuff. We're not going to mess with that. Um, I'm going to go right down and just put my ID right here. Radio ID. There it is. The rest of this stuff on this page here, I don't need to change, so I'm going to ignore it. And it should be set. looks to be set from the manufacturer default for the optimal settings. So yeah, you don't have to figure out what you need to set here. We're going to close that. Okay, and then we're going to go into digital common basic and we'll put our radio ID right here so you got it in three different places at this point your radio now has your ID in it the rest of the stuff here I'm not gonna mess with okay so we'll close that your IDs in now let's look at contacts you're familiar remember how do you get to talk group 3148 or TAC 310 right those are contacts so if we go here to DMR services and we click on contact all right, this is where your contacts would go. For instance, we'll add TAC 310, group call, ID is 310. We'll add another one. We'll call it TAC 311 as a group call, ID 311. Uh, another one, we'll do Brandmeister 3148, ID 3148. And we'll make a private one too. We'll go... Uh, KB4 OVL as Jim as a private call. And I think his ID is 3118877. I might be wrong, but just for an example, you understand. Three group calls, one private call. Okay. So as you make a code plug, this list will be full of all kinds of contacts. Or if you download a code plug previously made by somebody else, you get imported into the radio if it's the same kind of radio and, and uh, have all your contacts there and then add as you need to. So we have four contacts, good. Now um, we'll go into channel here, and we'll go to digital channel. Now the radio had a couple in here by default just for testing or whatever, so I'll just show you. You've probably seen this before with an MD380. Kind of looks almost similar, right? 
your channel alias. We'll call this the local repeater. Uh, we'll name it um, K4CPJ, color code one, and the slot. Now look at this right here. Pseudo trunk. Normally you'd pick slot one or two, but with Hytera radios, you have the ability to use pseudo trunking. And I'm not exactly familiar with pseudo trunking. I do know that there's a couple of uh, repeaters in Las Vegas that a group runs, and they're running pseudo trunks. So at any given time when they're driving around or transporting, they can use the trunking, the pseudo trunk, so that they can it'll it'll route them to a nearby or the nearest repeater and free the, the currently free talk um, time slot. So as you travel around, it'll keep you to the nearest repeater, and if one time slot's busy, it'll put you on another one. That's something that really makes a Hytera radio awesome. For, for this situation, for a regular repeater or hotspot, we're just going to pick the slot. Slot 2, for example. Okay. Uh, more settings on trunking with these can be found online by the others that have used it, so I won't go into it. Uh, the rest of the stuff here, you know, really all you need for a local repeater, you would want the frequency. 444.325 uh, receive. The transmit would be plus 5. Uh, contact name. Now, remember we made the contacts. Where do you want to talk on that repeater? So I could choose TAC 310. That means if I'm talking through the local repeater, it would route to TAC 310. Or uh, Brandmeister 3148 or, or all kinds of Brandmeister network or uh, uh, KB4OVL as a private call. So that's the, the contact name. So for in this situation, we'll just pick TAC 310. The receive group list is one. You should really never need more than one receive group list. Um, the rest of the stuff here, power level, put it on high. Timeout timer, we'll do 120. And the rest of this stuff, you could you could really not have to worry about unless you're an experienced user. And uh, just save that. You just hit close. That's channel one. Now, we'll make another one here. And we'll call this one for the hot spot. So we'll go open spot, color code one, uh, slot one, slot two. Doesn't really matter what slot for a hot, uh, oh, a hot spot. Um, we'll go down here. My hot spot frequency is 435.0000. 435.0000. So my hot spot's running like a simplex repeater, basically. Uh, contact name. So if I want to talk on 3148, there. It's going to route my transmission to 3148 through my hotspot, okay? Power level low. On my hotspot, you even saw in my open spot video, I didn't run it on high, I ran it on five milliwatts. There's no real reason to have to transmit into a hotspot at five watts unless you're in a huge house or you're working out in the backyard. Uh, other than that, you don't really wanna overload the thing with five watts three feet from you. So just leave that on low for a hotspot. The rest of the stuff, if you wanna set out the timeout timer and all that, you can do that. Um, but we'll close this and I'll make an analog one. See over here you have analog channels So we'll edit this analog and we'll call this the uh, uh, W4PHJ for an example channel spacing um, You know the, the analog options that you have So really we're not okay. I just confused myself. We're not gonna need anything right there other than the frequency of the repeater like this. The receive and transmitted uh, continuous tone coded squelch system or CTCSS. Um, we'll just set the tone to the regular tone, you know, 107.2. If you need to receive tone also, you can do that. So right here I have, as it sits, a standard UHF analog repeater setup um, for a channel so we're just going to leave that like that so now i have two digital and one analog okay and so you have your contacts you have your channels and now the zones okay and your zone pretty much makes it easy to organize things i mean there's really no set way to program these things if i want to call this zone florida and have only florida repeaters in here i can do that if someone tells you that's not the way to do it I, I disagree with that. I mean, if you want to make one zone per repeater, you can do that. It's going to be a little more tedious finding what you want. But a zone for Florida, for instance, I can put, say, these two repeaters in here. So I have one analog and one digital. 
in Florida. Now, if I travel from New York to Florida, I can flip over to my Florida zones and have all my channels for all my repeaters programmed into Florida zone, Florida one, South Florida, North Florida, Central Florida. And that makes it easier instead of scrolling through a list of repeaters alphabetically ordered. Um, so that's zone one. Then I can go right here and, and name zone two. We'll call this um, hotspot. And let's say I have several hotspots or let's say, um, you know, I have an open spot and then a friend at an office has an open spot. And it's, I can name this hotspot and put all kinds of hotspot. I could use Jim's hotspot. I could use, uh, you know, my hotspot and put a bunch of them in there. Um, so that way, that's only for hotspots. That way, or you could even just do your own like this. I mean, it's no, no crime to that. And if you need more zones, you go like this. You right click on zone. You click add. Okay, and we're going to call this one North America. And then let's say I have repeaters over here that are worldwide, nor or, uh, English North America, um, regional, you know, stuff like that. I can set all those in here, and then I know, okay, here's the America uh, talk group. Here is the, uh, you know, United States talk group, West or whatever. You can set it for zones. So, in a nutshell, you understand. You have your DMR ID in here. You have contacts that you can make here. You have your channels set like this, and you have your zones. You can make one zone and just pile up with stuff if you want to and just remember which zone is for what repeaters. But overall, um, you know, there's a lot of other functions in here. For instance, the pseudo trunking I told you about. Then they have extended pseudo trunking which is for even more advanced trunking on this. And if you're using this on a repeater or a hotspot, you don't need to new use the trunking or learn about it. It's a great feature. I'm going to learn about it. But in this area, it's not going to be used at all. So, um, you know, I'm pretty sure you're looking at this and saying, yeah, that's not too easy. That's not too bad. It's, you know, but there's some people that might say, no, I'm not getting a new radio. I'm not learning a whole new software. I just figured out this TYT and I'm, I'm now that's all I know. It's really not that much of a, a big change to do that. Just they're in different spots, you know. But the CPS here should be very similar to all the models, minus like the 362 that doesn't have the trunking. Uh, maybe will have less features in it. And the ham versions will probably have some features in here stripped off as well that are really for the commercial side and not the ham version side. So. We'll see when we get one of those ham versions what the software looks like on that. But hopefully this answered a question on where do you get the software, what does it look like, and how do I program my radio. If this showed you any of those three, leave a comment down below, click a thumbs up, and um, in the future, if we have to, maybe we'll go into a real in-depth and we'll build an entire code plug if we have that much request. Who knows? And 73 from KJ4YZI.